We've got some new people that just came on. So this is Ed Crow. Thanks for joining today. Uh, we are t today. We're going to talk about traditional long-term care. Um, talk about a, the the, at, the environment for long-term care. Briefly touch on a new carrier that came out. Um, a carrier we just contracted, and um, just give a quick highlight of of them. To talk about alternatives to long-term care because oftentimes people uh, agents will have. Uh, prospects that want long-term care, but once they realize how expensive a traditional LTC policy is, usually they don't sell a traditional plan, uh, but sometimes they will sell alternatives. So the alternatives at this point, um, and we'll go over a couple today, hybrid uh, policies and annuities with LTC. The alternatives usually are oftentimes a more viable uh, option, um, often sells more than the traditional LTC. But as I mentioned earlier, today is going to be a little bit um, meshing a couple things into one uh, webinar today on this 20-minute webinar. Um, I'm going to talk about the traditional LTC, which that could be its own, but we're going to really the point of it is to talk about that, give you the lay of the land with LTC, and then talk about, give you some ideas about alternatives to that, which is what sells more often. So try to sort through that as we go. Um, a couple quick things. If we do a webinar every Wednesday and Thursday at one, uh, if you're not getting our emails, just call us and we can make sure they get it, get out to you for the invitations. Usually on Medicare, sometimes on other topics such as this, uh, we record all our webinars. If you register, you will get a copy of the recording. Um, so future reference, you got to you'd like one of the webinars, but you can't make the time. Just register. You'll get the recording, and then questions send them into the webinar, and we will answer them at the end. So. Having said that, let's get started. Okay, so traditional LTC, uh, obviously traditional long-term care policies have been around forever. Uh, we get a lot of inquiries still about them. I mean, the traditional LTC market is down tremendously. It's, you know, some people actually call it a dead market. I wouldn't say it's quite dead and buried, but certainly the sales of long-term care nationally with all organizations is, you know, is just a... A small percentage of what it, what it used to be 15 years ago, but we still get a lot of questions about it. We also still run quite a few illustrations for it, but it results in few sales. The reason for that is people know they should have it. <clears throat> they maybe had a family member that needed long-term care. They realize it's a real thing and they should have it, but I think what they fail to realize then is how expensive the plans actually are, which they've gotten very expensive. And as a result, they know they should have it, but they don't have to buy it. Um, they talk to the agent. We run illustrations. The agent runs illustrations. They see how expensive it is, and they don't purchase it. So the other problem is oftentimes people who inquire about it are in their 60s. It is too late, usually in most cases. I mean, once in a while, somebody has a lot of money. You'll sell them an LTC in their 60s or 70s uh, if they're healthy. Um, but really, ideally, somebody would want to buy long-term care in their early 50s, um, even earlier maybe, uh, to get the price point at least somewhere in the in the ballpark for their budget. The rate increases can be a problem in LTC. Those not familiar, long-term care is a level premium product. However, states based on their loss ratio, or I shouldn't say states, companies based on their loss ratio can file for book increases in a given state. They do, and they get them all the time. So somebody who bought an LTC that thought they're going to be paying you know, $300 a month for it forever, uh, over the years it gets a lot more expensive because their company has been getting approvals on overall book rate increases. So they are level premium products, but they really aren't. Um, <clears throat> the other big thing is asking for it after there's an issue. A lot of these inquiries we get about long-term care is because something has come up. Um, somebody's having memory issues or rheumatoid arthritis or they're having trouble getting around. And so they're like, oh, I need long-term care. And, you know, and a lot of people don't realize it's too late then. Uh, you, you're not going to pass underwriting at that point. As a result of all this, there are very few carriers now that offer long-term care anymore. There's even fewer than that that offer it on a commissionable basis. Um, so there's Certainly companies that offer long-term care, but hardly any of their policies are commissionable. If you add a 3% or 5% inflation rider to it, um, they say, well, it's not commissionable then. Uh, it, so it just makes it difficult to navigate, you know, 
policies that you can sell and get paid on. The two companies that are pretty much commissionable on all their plans are Mutual of Omaha. They've kind of they've hung in there for a long time. They still have long-term care. We still sell it. Um, their policies are commissionable. Uh, and National Guardian Life, um, they are the new carrier we're going to talk about, and they have come out with a product that's commissionable. They call it a central LTC, um, and rates are are good. I mean, that's subjective, though. They're good compared to other long-term care rates. Having said that, they're still very expensive. Um, so NGL's essential LTC, it's a standard policy. It does home and facility care, other types too, uh, assisted living. It'll do uh, a benefit towards home aids. It, it's a comprehensive long-term care policy that covers all the categories. You know, same things as most long-term care to qualify you got to be able to not perform two out of six ADLs, um, usual stuff, usual underwriting uh, that you're used to seeing on long-term care. Issue ages are 40 to 79. People in their 40s, if they have enough uh, foresight to buy a policy in their 40s, that's obviously when the pricing is better. But then you've got the issue of worrying, worrying about you know state book increases uh, that the carriers can get over the years. So they might lock in at a, a low rate, but it's probably going to have some rate increases throughout the course of their life. Uh, they do joint policies. Their joint uh, policy is actually pretty flexible. It just has to be another individual residing in the same home. Uh, it doesn't have to be a spouse. Standard elimination periods, uh, zero, which would be very expensive, but zero, 30 days, 90, and 180. So usual stuff there. Uh, they have a two- and a three-year benefit, and then you can purchase riders to get an additional benefit um, to ex extend those years out. Um, it can go all the way up to an unlimited benefit, which is unusual to see anymore. Unlimited years benefits used to be common. Um, they're a rare thing now, but they will do it on this policy. They have shared care. Uh, they have multiple inflation options. 3% and 5% compound are the ones you probably know the best or that we know the best. Uh, they have both. They do a step rate, 3% uh, and 5% step rated inflation, uh, and that's based on a schedule. Uh, it's not going to be, um, it's going to be less expensive to add a step rate inflation rider, but it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to increase the benefit like the 3 or 5% compound would. Uh, there's a turn of premium writers available. They, of course, come at a cost. Um, standard underwriting process, um, which can be anywhere on LT LTC 30 to 60 days underwriting. So that can be a little arduous at times. Um, question comes up, what about if I've got somebody who was previously declined for long-term care? Probably going to be declined for this one as well. Uh, they do have an exception process. They will actually consider the case. But in most cases, that's going to be a decline if they were previously declined. They have a pre-qualification uh, review process that's available through the carrier, meaning before you spend a lot of time and dive into trying to get somebody an LTC policy, you can give the carrier a general idea of their health and any health conditions, and they'll give you a, a pre-underwriting opinion on that. Commission schedule, again, pretty standard stuff. Um, their street commission is 65% commission first year with a 6% renewal. Uh, that's the street comp. Looks about the same as, as most LTC plans. Question comes up, you know, are there higher levels? Sure. Um, for for somebody who's a big, big producer, um, there can be an uh, increase in commission. Or for agencies, there can be a GA um, level built in. Mutual of Omaha is the other traditional LTC policy that's still out there that pays comp. So really, from an agent standpoint, you're looking at maybe this new NGL policy or an Omaha when it comes to long-term care and actually getting paid for it. So alternatives to LTC, because what usually happens is, as I said before, you'll quote LTC, they'll be shocked by the price. And when they are, you'll look at alternatives. And sometimes the alternatives can be a better deal. Um, but rates, age, underwriting, rate increases, all of that makes it hard to sell that LTC policy, that traditional policy. So the two alternatives we'll talk to about today, I tried to pick two different ones. As I picked a, a traditional, what would be a hybrid policy, it's a life 
based policy with an LTC rider, and that's Lincoln's Money Guard. Uh, they're on version three of that. It's a Money Guard three, it's called. And again, that is a life platform. So it has a death benefit, life platform with an LTC rider. It's one of the best known ones. Money Guard's been around for a long time. People always ask, what's the comp? The street on a Money Guard is 6%. Um, and then the other one I looked at is a little different twist on the alternative, and that is using a fixed um, annuity with a long-term care rider. The one we're going to talk about today is Global Atlantic's four care policy. I use that one because their leveraging is really good, meaning, you know, for the money you put in, they give you a lot of long-term care uh, compared to other uh, fixed annuity LTC products. So if you're not familiar with these, both are deposit type products. So ba more or less with both types, the person puts in a lump sum of money. Um, they don't have to put in any future premiums. They can do it as a single pay. They can do it up to a 10 pay as well if they want to do 10 installments. But they do a single pay. That money they put in is leveraged towards life and or long-term care. Uh, and then they're going to use that as their long-term care benefit down the road. So we'll start with the money guard. So you can go single pay, single deposit. You get the best leverage towards long-term care on the money guard single deposit. And I will give you an example of that in a minute. Um, or you can go up to a 10 pay. If you do a 10 pay, the initial leverage on the LTC won't be as good because you're spreading the premium over 10 years versus if you're paying all the premium up front, you're going to get the max leveraging right at the beginning. As I mentioned before, Money Guard's a life product, so it does have a death benefit. So it's a life product with an LTC rider. Um, the concept is very similar to what I'll be talking about with Global Atlantic. Global Atlantic does the same thing, put in a lump sum. It leverages that money towards a bigger LTC benefit, um, but it's just on an annuity chassis instead of a life chassis. We'll talk about the pros and cons of both. So Money Guard, you put in a lump sum, they leverage it towards a bigger amount of long-term care and life insurance, both. And to show you how this works, I'll give you an example. Um, used a, I ran a 60-year-old female in good health. If that 60-year-old female puts a, a single deposit of $98,700, uh, that's just what was the amount we ran the illustration for. So, you know, why wasn't it 100000 Well, that's what she wanted was 987. That's what she had for a lump sum of discretionary assets. But anyway, um, 987 immediately leverages towards 360 of long-term care. So she puts that money in. Boom, it's immediately 360000 of long-term care. That way, if she needs long-term care coverage, she's got $360,000 worth of it. It also gives her an immediate death benefit of 130000 So more or less, you're giving Lincoln your money. They're really not giving you much for interest uh, on that money, if anything. But they're giving you immediate leveraging towards long-term care, and they're giving you an immediate life benefit. No additional premiums are paid. And if you think about this, they're going to wind up using this one way or the other. Kind of a no-brainer in that regard if they have the money on hand to do it. They put the money in. If they need LTC, great. They've got money towards LTC. If, and this happens sometimes, throughout the course of their life, they die and never needed long-term care, well, this still has a, a death benefit. Um, I wrote life benefit. Probably should say death. But this has a death benefit of 130000 so it's going to pay out 130. So either way, they're getting a return on their money. Um, there's really not a way in this scenario, and that's why it's popular, with the money guard where they get screwed, so to speak. They're, they're using the money one way or the other. So as I said, either they use the LTC benefit, or if they don't use any LTC, they pass away and get the death benefit. Um, they can get the same leverage on a 10 pay, but what'll happen is it's not really the same leverage. So if somebody puts in that same amount of money, they're gonna get the same LTC benefit ultimately, but they gotta put in more. So let me go back for a minute, I butchered that. So. If you do a single deposit of 98,700, that gives you a 360 of LTC. If you want to do that on a 10 pay, you're going to wind up putting in more over 10 years than 98,000 to get that same 360. 
So the 10 pay doesn't leverage as well because you've got to put in more money over the course of 10 years uh, to get to the 360000 of benefit. So it costs you more to pay it over in 10 installments versus one. There are return of premium options on this. Quite frankly, why would somebody use a return of premium? Uh, it's kind of a gimmick. Um, consumers, uh, prospects like it, like the idea of it. Um, 70% or 100% uh, ROP. But really, if this is money that they have set aside and they want to use it for long-term care, uh, there's you know better use of the money as long-term care or as a death benefit. You know, using the ROP option doesn't make a lot of sense because it costs you to do that. They reduce the amount of LTC in life you get if you choose one of those return of premium options. But having said that, if they use return of premium, you know, eight, nine, ten years down the road, they say, hey, you know, I just want my money back. Well, they, if they pick the 100% return of premium, they can have it all back. They won't get interest, but they'll get their money back. Um, but again, not something that would usually be used. However, it is a popular um, request from people. The amount of leveraging you get depends on age and health. So if we go back for just a second, that example, the 60-year-old female, she put in 98000 and got 360 of LTC. Well, if that person was younger, that 98000 would get them more. Maybe for a 55-year-old, it'd get them 400000 On the other side of the coin, if that person's older, say they're 65, that 987 might only get them 300, for example. So age makes the difference, and health uh, makes the difference when you're determining the amount of leverage you're going to get from the deposit. MoneyGuard has pretty standard LTC benefits. Um, the way it pays out is a little different. Unlike a traditional LTC where you can choose a two, a three, five-year policy, MoneyGuard is a set payout. It's going to pay a monthly max based on six years. So it'll take your 360000 basically divide it by 12 for six years, and that's what it pays out. So it's only on a six-year schedule. You can't shorten that schedule to make the higher to make the monthly amount higher. The only way you could do that is by putting more money in initially. Issue age on MoneyGuard is 30 to 70. Obviously, if somebody's in their 30s or 40s, uh, if they're smart enough to do that, they're going to get tremendous leveraging on the LTC benefit. Um, the minimum maximum deposit, uh, people ask that a lot. They base it off the death benefit. So the minimum is you'd have to put in a, enough money to get to create a minimum death benefit of 50000 The max you could do is a $500,000 death benefit. So obviously the younger the person, you know, the less they got to put it, the less, the lower their minimum because they don't have to put in as much money. It leverages better. But anyway, those are the maxes on a money guard. Inflation can be added on a money guard policy. It will just, again, reduce the leveraging you get. They're charging you by reducing your leveraging. Underwriting on this policy is simplified, so it's a quick issue. It can be turned around uh, in a week or two. Uh, there isn't a medical. They just ask questions. They pull an MIB. Uh, they'll do an APS if they want, if they're curious about something. So simplified issue, so you get them issued out a lot quicker. The one thing I want to mention, though, is it is not, I don't, this is misconstrued a lot, is a way to get around underwriting. They're still underwriting it. They're just not asking for a medical, and they will decline poor risk. And people say, well, how's the underwriting of money guard compared to a traditional LTC as far as leniency? It might be slightly more lenient, but not much. Um, right around the same, uh, pretty much the same. They're just not asking for the medical. They'll just issue it quicker, but they'll decline Risks that normally would be declined on traditional, they'll decline on money guard as well. Street commission, as I mentioned, is 6% on this product. So they put 100000 in as a deposit. It's a $6,000 commission. Okay, so that's Lincoln Money Guard. Remember, life policy with an LTC rider. Global Atlantic Forecare works the exact same way with the leveraging, just like Money Guard does. The only difference is... Global Atlantic is a fixed annuity with an LTC rider. Issue ages on this product are 50 to 80. Minimum deposits, the actual money you put in, 35000 minimum, $400,000 maximum. It provides standard LTC coverage, just like a regular policy does or like a money guard does. Um, and this would apply to a regular policy or money guard, too. I just gave more detail here. It'll cover 
facility, home health care, home aid, personal care, assisted living, hospice. They've got a homemaker service benefit. It's pretty flexible and pretty comprehensive. Same thing as the money guard is they pay the benefit out over six years. So it's a monthly benefit for a six-year period. Basically just means that you, since they're, they'll pay it up to six years, it's less per month versus a two- or a three-year policy. This is also a simplified issue. Um, it is still underwritten, so it's, you know, it's, it is a little more lenient than a regular LTC or money guard, but not a lot more. I mean, you're not going to take somebody who, you know, it has a major medical condition who was declined on a traditional LTC or money guard and get an approval here. They might be a little bit easier, but they're still underwriting nonetheless, just on a simplified issue basis. They have single and joint options. Um, this is a single deposit only product. So unlike the money guard where you could do a 10 pay, you can't on this, it's one deposit only. And unlike the money guard, the Global Atlantic doesn't have a death benefit. So basically they put money in this. Uh, if the person passes away without using any LTC, it just pays out whatever the value of the annuity is. If they need LTC, they have the leveraging and this product does leverage better. Uh, than a money guard, and I think I have an example of that. Inflation protection, you don't have to buy it. It's actually included with the product. So when you quote this thing and you're looking at the leveraging they get towards LTC, that includes inflation. This is an annuity, so it does have a 10-year surrender schedule, not for LTC benefits, but if they just wanted the money back. Uh, if they just want their money back, they put in the annuity. Um, if they do it within the first 10 years, just like a regular annuity, they're going to have a 10-year surrender schedule. Um, where they're going to pay a penalty for taking it out prior to 10 years. I'll give you an example here, and I, I think you'll see how this works. I happen to run a 50,000, which uh, wasn't perfect for today's presentation, but a 61-year-old female, $50,000 deposit. That's an immediate LTC benefit of 122000 So as you can see, it does leverage well. Uh, that includes the inflation, by the way. Um, so... The inflation, to give you an example of that, that same 61-year-old who put 50000 in, it was worth 122000 towards long-term care. Um, but at age 71, because of the inflation, that same benefit's worth 167000 Now, here's the catch. So the index, the fixed annuity itself, they are, they take charges out of that to provide the LTC benefit. So the after surrender charges, that annuity is going to be worth forty-one thousand. They put in fifty; it's only worth forty-one. So if they don't use it towards LTC, um, they're going to get less than they put in, one way or the other. If they pass away, or if they just decide to take the money. So Money Guard is nice because it has the life portion in it. However, it doesn't leverage towards long-term care as well. The annuity leverages better towards long-term care, but if they never use long-term care, they're going to lose some of that initial deposit. But if you look at it, really, that's not a lot to pay for have, having had long-term care coverage that whole time. And in the illustration I ran, that cash value will never go below 41. That was the lowest it went. So it just stayed at 41,000 for the rest of their life. So if we compare the two products, um, the Global Atlantic doesn't have the death benefit um, just like the Money Guard does. However, the leveraging is better on the long-term care and inflation is included. Um, so the cash value of the Global Atlantic will never equal what was put in it. Um, but obviously, there's a guaranteed minimum, so you know it won't go below that minimum. So this really comes out to about the equivalent of an 80% return of premium product, if you think about it. Um, it just leverages better on the LTC. How does traditional compare to these alternatives? Well, I mean, the traditional products are expensive, uh, and the rates, I mean, I said most likely, the rates are going to go up. Uh, the companies will get approval on state-based book rate increases, so those rates will go up a few times over the course of their life. One nice thing about traditional is the monthly benefit and payout is more flexible with these. So technically, they will tell you, if you talk to experts in long-term care, they'll say you want to go short and fat with a policy, meaning the average long-term care need is, is usually isn't more than three years. So it would make sense to pick a two or three year payout period because that way you get more per month, 
yes, it's only for two or three years, but odds are they aren't going to need it for more than that anyway. So you'd rather have a higher payout every month for a shorter term. The big risk with traditional is somebody could pay for it forever. They could put it on the, you know, take a policy, pay for it for years and years, and then never need it. With traditional long-term care, you die and don't need long-term care unless you went with an ROP option, which is really costly to do. Unless you went with an ROP option, you're just losing all that premium. So alternatives are good options for those that have discretionary assets. So if a person's got a extra $100,000, they really aren't going to need to spend uh, extra two or $300,000. The alternatives work better because they put that money in there. And like I said, with either product, they're going to get most of it. With the case of the money guard, they're going to get more money than they put in one way or the other. And with the annuity-based alternative, you know, they're either going to get a, a lot of long-term care coverage, or if they pass away without needing it, they're still getting most of what they put in back. So it's a, a it's long-term care on the cheap, really, compared to a traditional policy. And of course, on the alternatives, the simplified underwriting is certainly nice. I mean, it, you know, instead of waiting 30 to 60 days to get a policy issued, it can be issued in a week or two. I think I talked over most of those um, points. Uh, as I mentioned before, the four care is the best leveraging towards LTC. And that is it. Um, we will send out the recording to everyone. Uh, let me see if we have any questions. Okay, so somebody asked, when there's a price increase, do they offer choices such as a paid-up policy or lowering the benefit? Yes, that's a really good question. So that question is applicable to traditional LTC, company files. They get a, a book rate increase for the whole state. Um, they will offer options such a paid up or lowering the benefit to keep the premium around the same. Next question was, is this a reimbursement or indemnity product? Uh, that's a good question, too. Um, there's a little of both. Um, the Some of them, some of the policies out there are on an indemnity basis, but the ones we were talking about today are, a re, are on a reimbursement basis. But the process is very simplified. Um, what are the rating agencies saying about these two products? Um, how are they rated? They're rated well. I mean, they're rated based off the the carrier. Um, so Lincoln is well rated. They're an A-rated company. They've been offering MoneyGuard for a long time. They're on the third generation of MoneyGuard, um, and MoneyGuard's been being offered by very large financial planning firms for years and years. I mean, it's a very common policy. It's well rated. It's ex widely accepted by financial planners, the insurance industry. Um, really nothing uh, outside of the box about the money guard. Um, National Guardian Life, I don't know the rating off the top of my head, um, to be honest with you. I have a feeling they might be a B plus, or maybe I'm misspeaking and they're an A. I'd have to check that um, to see what their, their rating is. I probably should have checked before the presentation, but the honest answer is I'm not positive on National Guardian. Is there a tool we can use to quote? Yes, Pinnacle on their quote site. Um, if you ever use Pinnacle's quote site, you should. It will quote and compare. I know we tend to use either Sunfire or Connector because we have access to both of them at no cost, but the quote site is nice. It'll quote Advantage Part D and supplements side by side. It'll run all the companies, whether you have them or not. Term, UL, final expense. The quote site isn't the full annuity rate watch quote engine, so you can quote MIGAs, indexed annuities. You can run comparisons on income riders. It's really great, and it has a financial, a long-term care quote tool as well. What I can tell you is you got to be on a lot of times if you try to run the long term care quote tool and it doesn't come up, it gets blocked often often by pop up blockers on your browser. Um, so you would have to um, turn that off in order for it to work appropriately. But yes, you can quote it on Pinnacle site under quotes and LTC as an option to quote. Let's see if we got anything else. Okay, I think I answered all the questions. 
All right. Well, if you have any other questions that you're not thinking of right now, we'd be happy to talk to you about it. You can call us if you want to get contracted with a carrier or get more info. Just call us here, 203-796-5403. You can shoot me an email, edward at cronassociates.com, or talk to myself, Lisa or Teal, uh, for contracting uh, if you want to get set up with any of these carriers. Other than that, I don't see any other questions coming in. I appreciate everybody joining me today. And uh, I hope everybody has, has a great weekend. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.